I'd say England into the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Did you boys watch it last night? What what did you make of it? Yeah, we all watched it. Um, very, very impressed, to be honest. Um, I think they've been top all tournament. Um, individual performances and collectively, I mean, um, they were in the Af Africa Cup of Nations, Senegal, and to be honest, it could have been maybe five, six in the end. So, um, yeah, I think they've been very impressive, but it's a massive test the next round. Yeah. I'm sure you've been keeping an eye on how our boys have been doing. Um, obviously, it's only Zhao who's left in it now, but um, there's some good individual performances in there. Like, what, what did you make of how our lads got on? Um, I think Wales didn't really get going. I think I felt a bit sorry for, for Harry and, uh, and Dan. Um, I think America did incredible. Very impressed with, with Jedi and Tim. I think they did exceptional in the group stages. I think they just fell a little bit short of it. International experience and a bit of quality in, in the end. Maybe ran out a bit of legs. It felt like they, they put a lot into the group stages, but I think on a surface they probably inspired a lot of people in America. Um, and as for Zhao, um, yeah, he's been coming on, doing his thing, tackling everyone. <laughs> but no, I think it's, hopefully, I think if Portugal and England got a chance to meet each other in the semis. Semis. Yeah, so hopefully um, that's what happens, yeah. Yeah, and obviously Mitro would have been like he's building up to this World Cup for for so long. Um, he personally, he scored a couple of goals, but he's going to be devastated that they went out in the group stage. Yeah, I mean we watched everyone on Mitro's games as well, and um, yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like they played a lot better in qualification and stuff, and um, they're probably a bit disappointed in the performances. But Mitro doing what Mitro does, still scored a couple of goals at World Cup, which is which is incredible. And speaking of the States, they, um, they've got a very young team, so they're obviously going to be in great shape going to the next World Cup. Tim is obviously the elder statesman in that group, uh, but you never like this guy's a machine. He could, he could go to the hey, World never, Cup. But, um, hang on, yeah. don't put it past him. I'm being serious, don't put it past him. He's, uh, if anyone can play four years later in the World Cup, it's maybe him, the yeah. way he looks after himself and stuff. So if he does, it's incredible. But um, nevertheless, I think they've got an incredible team. I just think they're missing a striker. Yeah. I think they struggle to score. They didn't struggle to really create chances, but I think they struggled to score. So if they can find a striker in the next four years, and yeah, they've got a good chance. But you can see how devastated Tim was um, at, at full time, and um, you, you've known him for nearly eight years now. So you, you must have felt for him when when you saw those scenes. Yeah, of course. Um, he's been, to be honest, he's one, he's one of the better players um, for, throughout the whole tournament. So I did feel for him, but Tim being Tim, he's really level-headed. He real he realised how far he'd come. To be fair, he's, he's come out of nowhere as well. He didn't even really play in the qualification. So, to credit to him how, he, how well he's played this season to get his forces way into the World Cup team. Something I'm just curious about, and we, we were watching Australia versus Argentina the other day at dinner, and um, when Messi scored, massive cheer from the players' table. And obviously, there's no Argentinian players there. Is it just because, as footballers, that's like the guy for you? You just want to see him doing well? No, I just I don't think he's Argent. Like, I don't consider him Argentinian. I just consider him. I don't know, God, God. Of, God, of, God of our football, do you know what yeah. I mean? I think you can see everyone wanted him to score and everyone wants him to, I don't know, like I kind of want to see him lift the World Cup to kind of cement his immortality, do you know what I mean? In, in football, he's, I think he's the best player to ever do it and I feel like I don't think we'll ever see anything like him again. So to watch him score in the World Cup is, is special. Yeah. And obviously this is such a, a strange time in like the football calendar. How, how have you found this, this period of the year? Obviously, it was, I guess it's quite nice to sort of have that two weeks off, have a little break with your family that you wouldn't normally get to do at this time of year? Do you know what? I've really enjoyed it. I think playing a lot of seasons in the Championship and realise how, do you know what I mean, hard it is constantly week in, week out. So to have a winter break, as they call it, a little two weeks with the family and try and refresh is, has been really nice. Yeah, just hopefully we can keep up the performances that we, we started with. Mm. And another change of scenery this week. You've been in the Algarve. Um, how have you found it? Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. It's not really been that much warm weather training because <laughs> it's been raining a few days but it's been nice to get away with the boys eat right get get the sleep in and, and, and train hard and do you know what I mean build up to boxing day yeah. obviously um Niskin's Cabano is not with us this week um, he's always good value on these trips um how's he doing are you guys like in regular contact with him um I've, I, I spoke to him before before we left obviously the um, I was in the training session where he got injured and it was it was horrible to see him like that seeming that much pain and the worry on his face and stuff, and obviously his worst fears kind of came true with the, with the injury. But um, the way he is, it's, it's weird because like half an hour after he did it, he was smiling, and that's just pure Cabano. I just think he's he kind of seen the funny side of it or the lighter side of it. Um, but you know what? I think I feel like this season and last season he had his his probably best time in a Fulham shirt, and it was amazing to see. Like I've always said, he's got an amazing ability, and he's, he he proved that. And obviously went out on loan for a little bit as well, so. He's mentally strong and he deserves all the plaudits he was getting. We just 
wish him well and hopefully he can get back to that level when he, when he gets fit. I suppose that's the especially gutting thing for him. He's, he's one of um, several of the boys who people outside the club might have written off, said wasn't good enough for the Prem. And he was proving that he was. And just the timing is horrific, wasn't it? Yeah, no, he was... He's a, honestly, since I came here, I remember his, remember his debut at Blackburn away. I thought we'd sign Ronaldo. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's a, no, he's got so much ability. I mean, he came through PSG, he's played, played, at, played at high level, trained with high level. Um, so, it was, so it was no surprise to me that the performances he was putting in. And then I think the gaffer, gaffer got the best out of him as well. So, um, no, listen, hopefully, hopefully it comes back stronger. Yeah. We had a little behind closed doors friendly yesterday, 1-3-2. Um, you played um, a very productive 45 minutes, involved in all three goals. How did you find that run out? Um, no, it was good. It was positive. I mean, um, 45 minutes under the belt and uh, it was nil-nil at half time. A bit of a... <laughs> 3-2 in the end, so it was a bit of a thriller second half, so no, I, f I felt good, I felt quite strong and yeah, the involvement in the goals and yeah, we, we created a few chances down the left, so it was, it was good. You ever been in a situation before where the refs not turned up, so the opposition manager no, it? No, no. Honestly, Sunday league, Sunday league refs turn up, but our ref let us down and their manager was referee and he had a, a bib on with number 10. Never seen anything like it in my life. Um, but it was, and he gave a dodgy decision at the end, didn't he? he gave, I don't know if you can show the fans and stuff what's going to happen. Dude, just explain what happened. Like three well, two up in stoppage time. Three two up stoppage time, and George Wickens uh, had the ball in his hands. It was like I don't know what is a six second rule, but obviously in the Premier League, like everyone takes longer than that, and there's never an indirect free kick. But he gave an indirect free kick for, for them to score near the end, but we blocked it, so it was good. He really wanted that draw, didn't he? Mm. I thought, what's his money on it or something? It's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. But um, no, indirect free kick in the box in a friendly, I've never seen. Oh, it's ridiculous. See, thank you, mate. Thank you.